Hi, and welcome to the Google Cloud and Nokia series on the cloudification of telecom provider networks. Why now and how? I'm Max Kamenetsky, Group Product Manager of Cloud Networking at Google Cloud. I am Jitin Bhandari, Chief Technology Officer for Cloud and Network Services at Nokia. Jitin, it's wonderful to have an opportunity to talk to you today. Um, we've been talking a little bit already about what it means to be cloud native. And of course, one of the things that we do need to discuss is what are these workloads that we actually want to run and where do we run them? Do you have any perspective on this? About three years back when we started the journey of cloudification and, and taking this journey next to what we call cloud native uh, for Nokia, and uh, especially for the cloud platforms that we have, which goes across networks, operations, assurance, and the full gamut of transforming the whole telco cloud, one of the first things we did was clear classification and bucketization of these workloads, right? What are we talking about here, right? Um, if you look at that whole spectrum of workloads and applications, they're very distinctively put on classifications. Some are control plane applications, uh, some are user plane applications, high bandwidth, uh, latency intensive applications. Uh, then we have got workloads which are storage intensive, um, more tie up to the analytics aspects of it, more tie up to the storage of the service providers, networks data and subscriber data in per se of natures. And then we've got workloads that are sensitive to latency and bandwidth and the positioning of that workloads where they sits in the network. So you got to start up with that broader spectrum when you're talking about the transformation. And inside those, it's just not about the networks, it's also about the workloads that are actually managing, operating, and taking care of the networks. I'm talking about workloads in the operations aspects, the assurance aspects, and workloads that actually ties up to the analytics and, and the big data pieces that sits in the telco space today. So that's what the landscape that we are thinking about when we talk about the cloudification and true cloud native nature of transforming these networks. Mm. So one of the things that uh, we often hear is the word containers. Right? So the notion that you have microservices that are stateless, that are uh, reduced to their minimum, absolute minimum size uh, that you're able to run in this kind of infrastructure. Now, of course, there are uh, container uh, systems such as Kubernetes. Um, this has been around for quite some time. In fact, uh, this is something that Google uh, has been thinking about for, for a very long time. Uh, Google's, uh, uh, Google open sourced uh, Kubernetes. Uh, it still is one of the major contributors to Kubernetes. And within Google, we have been running a container-based infrastructure for well over a decade at this point. Uh, do you believe that uh, in the telecom community, we're ready to have uh, containerized network functions uh, for all of our workloads? <laughs> Max, I'm almost convinced now to that point that we are absolutely ready to take over uh, what the cloud native uh, computing foundation set up and Google has been pioneers in setting up the Kubernetes and the containers mission. Two things we studied very closely. Because of our backgrounds into the telco space, we, we know where, and interestingly, thanks to 3GPP specification and how the network functions architectures has been defined, uh, if you see the architectures and the definitions of it, they are actually almost screaming for an adoption of a microservices adoption, right? Uh, how do you take those implementation of containers? How do you take the concepts of reuse? How do you build and architect these applications from a fresh, fresh approach that actually defines scale, resilience, and concepts of reuse? So, so, so I'm almost convinced that whether you go into that spectrum that I previously talked about, Pick any workload of that spectrum. There is enough proof point that the maximum concepts of reuse, the concepts of microservices and containers can easily be implemented into these applications. But one thing we need to think about, this is not an overnight process. This journey has to start well ahead in advance, re-architecting these applications, what they do in the network, whether they are a control plane, a user plane, or a storage node, or an operations node, you got to think about that. You got to think about the value they bring into the 5G ecosystem. 
Uh, and all these considerations are really important uh, when you embrace technologies like microservices and containers. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that point. So it does sound like we need to still have an architecture that supports containerized workloads, virtualized workloads, perhaps even, even VMs. Um, one other thing that's been very important in the IT architecture world is the openness of platforms, the openness of uh, interfaces. Um, if you look at examples like Kubernetes, which we already mentioned, which is open sourced, and a number of other technologies uh, like Istio uh, for service meshing, um, which are open sourced, um, they bring tremendous value to the community. And of course, there are other great examples like Android, which is an open source platform that's enabled a, a huge ecosystem, or Linux. Um, what do you think is the value of openness and open APIs uh, to telecom workloads? Openness to me means at multiple layers, and, and you so hit it very, very well. We gotta start thinking about how do we design applications in a more open way, and, and you spelled it right, right? Long gone are the ways where you build an application from scratch. The concepts of reuse from those open source communities is, is almost inherent to how you build applications and hence the term platform as a service or the past components we've been talking about quite a bit of how do we reuse what the platform brings is assets when we're talking about firewalls assets, when we're talking about forwarding assets and many aspects of those and how do we look at service mesh concepts and, and reuse those as we are re-architecting these networks. So absolutely openness out there plays a big role. Um, the other aspect of openness to me is all about how do you open up the networks, the operations, and the analytics of this infrastructure, right? To tell you the truth, you know, this has been a big challenge for the telco space. You know, we have failed uh, in the last um, many years of our journey, especially during the virtualization pieces of it, of really creating up open value systems that connect straight up to the marketplace. So to me, as much as building the application and re-architecting the applications in an open paradigm is important, what is also critical is how do you make sure that those cloud native design principles of open APIs, you know, those restful APIs that engage in a true service-oriented architectures from one block of software to another block of software really comes to full life. And to me, that's going to be critical in the designing principles of an application today. Yes, I agree. And, and I think if you also look at some of the initiatives that are happening in the telecom industry, and, and of course, both Nokia and Google have been participating in them, which is really all about creating open interfaces, open APIs, and allowing choice, allowing flexibility, and all of those things. Uh, what do you think are some of the uh, pitfalls uh, that maybe we need to be looking at as well? You know, Max, uh, every time I connect with our service provider friends and especially the telco CTO communities, one topic that often comes up is about data privacy, security, and trust. Um, and how are we doing that when we talk about migrating the networks and operations into private and hybrid clouds? Uh, it'll be fantastic to hear your views and Google Cloud view. Where do we stand? Uh, how do we handle that concern for service provider and operators out there? Mm. Well, Jidin, I strongly believe that it is a fallacy to think that moving to cloud somehow compromises privacy or security or control. Mm. Uh, in fact, these are um, telecom operators are not the only industries that are on this journey uh, to cloud. Uh, look at some other highly regulated industries uh, that are also on this journey financial services, as an example. Um, Google Cloud has built in very strong protections for assuring privacy and security. Maybe a couple of points I can make on this. The first is that we strongly believe that the operators will continue to control their networks, will continue to own their networks. They will continue to operate uh, their networks. And the data is, and the users are theirs. We are merely, merely technology enablers from that perspective. Second, on the security piece, moving to cloud actually enhances security. Consider the kind of investments that public cloud companies, such as Google, are making in security. 
whether you look at Project Zero, uh, which is Google's uh, team uh, that has been instrumental in discovering some of the key, some of the worst uh, vulnerabilities uh, over the last uh, decade, or whether you're looking at the investments we're making uh, in support of the nine products that each have over a billion users, uh, we are able to take these investments and scale them for our cloud customers in providing uh, very comprehensive security. We talked before at the example uh, or about the example of Anthos Service Mesh. Anthos Service Mesh enables security uh, at rest, uh, in transit, and as a result, you're able to establish an automatic zero trust uh, infrastructure. This is something that we really are looking forward to working with telecom operators on as well. Fantastic, that absolutely uh, makes sense and looking forward for the collaboration out there in the marketplace. Thanks for catching our discussion on the cloudification of telco networks. We'll see you next time in the cloud.